Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and in this video tutorial, we're going to look at Taw You Know LX from Taw Software. Now, this is the first in a little series of videos on the Taw Software set of plugins. We're also going to be looking at the Taw Baseline 101, the Taw J8, and the Taw Mod in future videos. Now, What's really, really cool about these plugins just from the get-go is that you can completely resize these plugins. So it doesn't really matter what size screen you have. If you're using a 720p monitor or using a 4K screen, you're going to be able to use them in your, um, in your monitor no, no matter where you are at. So even if you have a really old school laptop, it's still using a 720p monitor. You can pull them up and you go to your studio and you have a 4K screen. Boom, you can resize it to your liking. So that's really, really cool from the get-go. Besides this, uh, of course, what's the most important is the sound. And now the sound that these uh, synthesizers create is quite special. Let's play back a demo track so you guys get a sense of what they sound like. All right, so that's the demo track that I made with uh, Tall Plugins. As you guys can see, it's all Tall Plugins. Even the little sound effects, they're all coming from the Tall Baseline 101, which is really nice plugin to create sound effects. Anyhow, so be besides showing you guys the plugins themselves, specifically in this video, the Tall Uno 106, I also want to show you some of the processing I made to make these sounds sound the way they do, and to further enhance their analog feel. First of all, uh, let's look at the Taw Uno LX. So from the get-go, I'm pretty sure you guys are aware what piece of hardware the Taw Uno LX is uh, emulating. But as you can see, it has the DCO, the high-pass filter, the VCF, VCA, Iliosar Course, LFO Formento, and the appreciator that the original one had. On top of that, there's also these control parameters and extra delay and reverb as well um, as more voices because we're not limited by analog we have you know digital capability so there's more voices available to us okay so let's play back uh in arp we can turn off the arp right here and i can choose syncing and i'll choose a tempo around here i'll use a i'll start off with a quarter note i'm going to activate the keyboard on fl and i'm going to press v I'm going to set this to be as played and up and down. And I'll choose the range to be two octaves. Right? Now if I select hold, I can press the chord. Right? And now what I'll do is I'll just mess around with some of the parameters here, like at the ADSR. Notice how we have to select the envelope to turn this on. Now we have pre different oscillators but it's one oscillator but we have three different waveforms we can generate
we have a saw wave. And we have a sub oscillator square wave. And you can turn on all of them at once if you like, or any combination of each. And we also have this uh, filter that has uh, a high pass filter, a regular filter, it doesn't really say if it's 12 or 24 dB proactive, nor can you change it. But we do have the ability of changing the polarity of the VCA. Which can create quite a piano type of sound. Uh, um, envelopes. Let's activate that really famous course. It, we can create some very beautiful textures. I almost lost my voice there <laughs> because I, I just couldn't even describe it. It, it sounds uh, uh, very melancholic, but we also have this warm feeling. And it certainly sounds different when we change the polarity on the VCF again. And as you can hear, there's also multiple types of uh, coursing going on. There's the uh, regular coursing and there's this detune coursing, which is the second one. You can play both of them together or individually as you like. There's uh, the LFO can be inverted as, as well.
So you can really change the tonality of uh, things if you want to invert them, if you want to change from a sine wave to triangle wave to, to saw wave. So that's what's really beautiful about these synthesizers. Unlike uh, more modern synthesizers like uh, Citrus, you really have a movement that's that's already happening straight up from the oscillator from the filter because they're not stable as not as stable or they're not programmed to be as stable as your typical um, uh, modern synthesizer like Citrus again. And I'm not picking the Citrus that's saying it's a bad synthesizer. I'm just saying it's a very digital synthesizer. Now, there is a few different controls here at the bottom, as well as a portamental section. Let's check them out. So, as you can see, there's a velocity and volume and PE volume as well. So, you can, you can do quite a bit of damage with the synthesizer. Before we hop over to the examples of uh, the presets that I made for the track, I wanted to show you the, what I said earlier that the oscillator and the filter don't work the same as with something like Citrus. So, here we have the oscillator from Citrus. And here we have the oscillator from the Tall Uno. Let's turn off the square wave. Fix the volume to be as similar to Citrus as possible, because Citrus is pretty loud. As you can see, it's nowhere as sharp as Citrus. Now, does that mean it's bad? No, it just means that it's emulating the classic uh, keyboard that it's meant to emulate. Uh, on top of that, if we use uh, the filter, It sounds a bit different than if we activate the filter on Citrus and just play this out of the box. Let's use a low pass filter as well. Let's do a little bit of an envelope here. The Citrus is very, very, very precise, very surgical. It doesn't mean it's mad, it's just very, very uh, precise. It's all you know. It's not sloppy, but it does have movement that the Citrus does not have. So uh, you can kind of recreate it with the Citrus, but it's not coded into the actual plugin itself. With Tall, uh, you know LX, it does it on its own. So just keep that in mind. There is something special about the plugin. So let's make this uh, graph smaller and let's focus on the demo track again. Let's play the individual instruments now. So you can hear two things. By itself, the preset sounds spectacular already. Now when I add some effects, I'm, I'm adding a little bit of saturation, a movement with Gatekeeper to create this Haas effect. And then I'm using the Q3 to clean things up to make space for the low instruments. And then there's a bit more reverb. So there's not much going on. From out of the box, it sounds quite amazing. Let's look at the... Uh, the drop right here, that's where it basically sounds naturally with just a little bit of gatekeeper.
So yeah, we're just adding a bit of sheen. So let's look at the preset itself. We have the the saw wave and the saw oscillator turned just a little bit. We're using a little bit of the high pass filter as well. And of course, you can see down here that we're actually automating the filter cutoff and the decay. So, so this is very, very important. Let's look at the decay. The decay itself almost sounds like a reverb. Let's turn off the reverb and the delay. Check this out. So when you pair them up together and you make sure you have a max spliffing that's quite high, like a more than uh, when you'd actually need. In this case, I think we're playing three chords. So I make sure that we have more than that. We have five. So by the time one release is uh, closing down um, and the next AD, um, attack envelope is opening, it you know releases on time. I could also, to make sure that I'm absolutely not losing any of them, I could set this to nine just in case and we actually were in fact losing some of them so this could also you know play a part in your sound design your voicing your your polyphony right and then we're using just a little bit of the pw pw to the dco a little bit of lfo modulation and I have the rate to be as quickly as possible. But I was only doing a little bit of modulation, so it doesn't, you know, change the actual pitch of the sound. It just slightly offsets it. And on top of this, we have the both choruses engaged. That chorus is just so essential. Even when you turn on the reverb and the delay, the chorus still is the most important effect there is inside this plugin. So keep that in mind. It's very, very powerful. Just make sure that you place things appropriately inside of the spectrum and the stereo uh, field. Because if you're trying to do the chorusing on like a bass, it might be too much. So you want to make sure that maybe you're just using the detune one so you can still get some information in the low register that's not changing too much and, you know, nulling itself out. So there's that preset. Now let's look at the next one. And that's this Raleigh that I have here. Let's close it down. Now for this one, I'm not using any of the chorus, as you can see. What I am using though, is a little bit of the reverb to create some of that tonality. Let's remove the reverb. As you can hear, there's a still reverb, but that's my room reverb. The reverb that, that I, that's in, you know, Alex 
is the one that I'm using to create the tone. So let's turn off the, the plugins here on my insert, and then we'll go over them in a second. It's very, very loud from the get-go. So adding a little bit of wetness. Now I'm able to um, create a little bit of tone. I'm pushing this up higher as well, so it's higher pitch instead of being a darker tone. So this makes it so that the sound sounds like it's more in your face rather than further away in the mix. Now the other thing I'm using is a delay. As you can hear there, I'm using it more to create a house effect than anything else. I'm not really using it to create a delay. But it sounds really lovely, as you can hear. You, we have like this tape style, style sounding, so it doesn't really, you know, stop and have these weird glitches that you see in, in a lot of other delays in, in, synth in synthesizers. This is really, really smooth. So the delay also has a spread function right here. So let's sync this up and put this in quarter note. I think the eighth note delay also sounds pretty good with this preset. Again, we bring the feedback down uh, if we're gonna make the delay longer or the time delay longer. Um, you can change the tone as I did here. Again, I wanted it to sound more present, so I made sure the tone was higher. Let's return these to the old settings I had. So essentially it sounds like we have two reverbs almost. At the beginning but then i'm i when i go into the processing side of things i decide to add a saturn with the warm tube and then i'm killing the high end not because i want to kill it but because i know that it's going to be maybe too much and I already am pushing bit of saturation with the band one and uh, mid band right here. After this, I'm using a bit of Pro Q and I'm bringing high end back. So what are you thinking? Well, that makes no sense. Why are you moving the, the high end, but then bringing it back in? Well, if we use the Saturn two, bring up the high end right there and then mute the band, the high band on the uh, Pro-Q3. It will not sound nearly as smooth as when you have the Pro-Qs turned on. For some reason, probably because we're not pushing as much tone into the distortion, uh, we're not, we don't get this high end that's brash. We only get it when we have the vibrato because the vibrato itself is very, very aggressive. So this helps accentuate uh, the vibratos and also tame the high end 
throughout the melody playing. So I really like that. I also have the dynamics pushed up quite, you know, to be quite squashed. Uh, you know, but you know, that's part of the sound. Uh, I wanted to go for a lo-fi effect, so I didn't really increase the quality. But you could if you wanted to. Then I add a reverb, and this is the room reverb. The one that's quite long. It's more like a hall. And then, uh, you know, pushing the stereo width uh, quite high. The decur rate's a little bit low, but I'm also pushing into the chorus. So, we get a pretty nice sound. So, this is more like a, you know, sauce at the very end. Uh, we have a fruity balance to control the level because uh, when I'm playing uh, throughout the track, I want to make it seem like it, the if the sound is coming from a place that's further back, and then I automate that in, as you can see here. Um, and then we have a gatekeeper. And that gatekeeper is basically just a side chain from the drums. If we make that 100% wet, That's very, very present uh, now. Um, let's tr introduce the drums here. Notice how when I have that gatekeeper, now that synth sounds behind the drums because it's giving space to the drums. So it's a really nice, useful tool. And all I did was I created steps for them and, you know, um, basically based on what, if it was a snare drum or a hi-hat or, or whatever, the, whatever type of drum there was, I based the hit on top of that. So if it was a kick drum or a snare, the hit's a lot louder. If it's a tom, it's a bit quieter. So the gatekeeper um, doesn't over drown the, uh, the lead sound. Okay, cool. So we have the two main instruments. Now we have this uh, re-space. And this is probably the simplest sound to create. I have uh, the two square waves turn on, and then I have a bit of noise. The filter is cut off a little bit. And I'm also using an envelope on that filter cutoff. So we're creating a little pluck, uh, but still sustaining part of the bass. And on top of this, um, I think we are, let's see using the chorus again. Now, to make sure that my bass doesn't, you know, become fully mono, or mono incompatible, I'm using a mono filter right here. So basically, I'm creating some tightness. Now, I'm using a Pro-Q3. To make sure that we're, we're getting rid of this, um, this boxiness. And I'm using a fan favorite of the Fruity Distortion. Probably, you know, not your most high quality distortion, but it does a trick for it for here. It's a very, very aggressive distortion, so be careful with it, but it works perfect for this situation. And again, I have that gatekeeper that's doing that same uh, uh, volume dec uh, decrease as in the, um, the lead, but in this case, it's much more aggressive because we are playing with low frequencies 
and they're colliding with the kick drum, you know? And again, I'm using a little bit of a, the free balance on the automation throughout the track. So there's the bass. Pretty simple, straightforward. And finally, here's a trance gate. Now these gatekeepers are not creating the trans gate itself. That's created with the LFO inside the synthesizer itself. But these gatekeepers are here to create some movement and to get the, the synth sound to get out of the way of the drums. And there's a bit of reverb and also a Pro-Q3 to clean up the sound. Just making sure that's away from the, the bass. But let's focus on the sound itself. Let's mute the, the effects. And what's creating the gate sound here, it's straightforward. It's the LFO. We have this at 16th notes and we have the mod modulation pretty up high. Let's play back. So we can quickly go from a pad sound if we pump the delay, I mean the, the tack a bit slower and then bring the modulation down. But in this case, we're bringing the attack shorter and while we're keeping that tone because we have the filter down and the high pass filter up to create space for that for that bass what i just have to do now is use some of the modulation And that does a trick. I'm also using the keyboard filter to affect uh, the movement of the, the different notes. So it's still there's still some expression. There's a little bit of delay and reverb as well, and the chorus, of course. I just really like that second chorus. It really sounds nice and detuned. And I love the tune sounds. So that's pretty much it for these sounds. Um, for this one, there's a little bit of uh, LFO modulation there. Again, probably just to make a, a little bit of uh, changing the pitch. You know, something that's very, very subtle. you almost don't notice it. Uh, again, just to summarize, all these plugins are very, very special because they are emulating synthesizers and using their DSP to best mimic these uh, strange oscillations and drifts in the filter and the oscillator that you would experience with analog synthesizers. So I'd invite you guys to check them out. Very, very um, you know, straightforward synthesizers. Uh, I wanted to start off with the Tall Uno LX because I know it's a good way to build up to the um, Tall J8 because it's a much bigger synthesizer. As you can see there, it's almost twice the size of the the Uno LX. But anyhow, as far as the Tall J8 goes, we're going to cover it in a different video. Once again, I want to thank you for being here with us at Music Marketing TV. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Also, uh, give the video a like if you learned something new today. And if you have any further questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Once again, I'm Kevin Ochoa with Music Marketing TV, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.